What's up, guys? Welcome <laughs> to another episode of the Monarchy Podcast. Today we have uh, two very special guests. Well, like I said, they're not really guests. They're very special team members, Yuli and Ricky. Hello. Uh, how's it going, guys? It's going good. 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 Staying busy. Excellent. I, I, you know, I want to kick this right off with the uh, that incident that Yuli was talking about earlier. <laughs> Uh, you want to tell us the uh, not the incident but what happened with your insured no names no names <laughs> yeah. with the homeowner uh yeah so i went to see a lead this morning and the homeowner you know had significant damage to his roof and interior water damage uh definitely you know a claim and so when it came down to signing the contract he wanted his sister um who's not a homeowner or lives on the property but he wanted her opinion wanted her to look over the contract and um so i left the contract and a few minutes later she called me and she had all these questions about, you know, why she should, file, you know, why they shouldn't file a claim and what kind of consequences they can have after filing a claim. She says that why do people say that it's not good to file a claim? But she couldn't tell me whose people were. I'm sure this is promoted by insurance agents and insurance companies. Well, wait, um, she didn't ask what are the consequences. Based on your story, you said that she she said that there are. Consequences. Yeah, she says there are consequences. So I explained to her that because people really, say. Yeah, yeah, there are consequences. So the only consequence would be that if she got paid for her damages and didn't actually do the repairs, then you have an issue. But if you have a covered loss, you get paid, you do repairs, as well, they can't punish you because you filed a claim for something that you're insured for. Um, so she just said it would make them seem like they're not reliable people um, and things like that. You know. So it's a bit just... It's a misconception. And misconception, lack of education. Lack really? of education, yeah. correct. Yeah. Which is one of our, our goals here is to... Or mission... As a company, not only to you know file claims on behalf of homeowners and help them get compensated, but also to educate uh, the consumer and um, you know help them know what their insurance is for and how it can help. Them. So yeah, and they're ready to pay for the repairs because they don't want to file a claim. So why have insurance if you're going to pay for everything that's even covered? And she also mentioned she was very proud of her no claim badge. So she she's had a, her property for 16 years and never filed a claim. And my question to her was, well, you've had a property for 16 years. Can you tell me that your premium has not gone up in 16 years? Ooh. So, yeah, that answers your question. If, you're, if you had never filed a claim, but your insurance has gone up every year, um, and they may not notice because it might be $100 you know, after the next year and $100 after the next year, but in 16 years, I'm sure it's gone up it at least $1,000. Um, so that's your answer right there. You haven't filed a claim and your insurance goes up anyway. Well, it, what I take from this is even though... You know, if you get that person as a client or not, at least you educated them. Right. A little bit, yeah. You know, I, I so. hope that, you know, and like I said, she's not even the homeowner where the, the loss occurred. Uh, but I hope that I can educate her. So when those people tell her, you know, things like that, um, exactly. that she can educate them. Yeah. So. Um, did you sign it, though? or the, did No, that was this morning. That was like right before I came over here. So. Uh, well, is it do you think it's going to come through? Uh, I'm not sure. I hope that they make the right decision and yeah. that I did a good job at educating them. Um, however, like I said, she's not the homeowner. So now the homeowner is between, you know, trusting us or trusting his sister, who's not an expert. I did invite her to, I told her she can interview. To the podcast? Huh? To the podcast? Well, she wants, she can come on the podcast too. <laughs> <laughs> we can go live. We can have that battle live. Uh, no, but I invited her to interview other adjusters. I told her, do your research, be an educated consumer. You don't have to believe me. Um, do your research, look up our company. She comes referred by a client that's worked with us a couple of times. Who's been, you know, I don't say any names, but she's been very happy. So it's somebody that came referred by, you know, another client. Um, I told her, look up our company, look it up. Don't take my word for it. You know, I'm not here to sell you anything. Just, you know. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. It's yeah. funny that, that she was a uh, pointing out, oh, I, I know what you're trying to sell. Yeah, well, she told me twice. Yeah, I, I know your <laughs> job is to sell me. I'm like, no, I'm not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> you well, called I, me. <laughs> I, I told her, I'm trying to educate you, first of all. Uh, and second of all, I provide a service that your brother, you know, requested a free inspection for. I didn't, you know, come looking for him. And so we're not selling anything. We provide yeah. a service for those that need it. Um, so, yeah. So we'll see. I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. From from being an avid uh, claims filer. filer <laughs> <on> <laughs> um, are there any consequences that you're aware of uh, to filing a claim? Um, truthfully, I think. The most important is doing the repairs because if you don't do the repairs, then now that's on the homeowner and then they're doing something wrong. If you yeah. took the money and did something else and they don't do the repairs. What I've seen happen is if they didn't do the repairs, the insurance company will not renew you. Or if you have a similar loss to the same, you know, uh, same type of loss, they will not pay you for that again. Um, 
I have seen back in the day, not anymore, but I remember State Farm had like a two claim rule or something. I don't know if you remember years ago, like if you had more than two claims and they would drop you. But it doesn't mean that you're uninsured. You're not insured with that company anymore. You can still shop around and go to another insurance company. And if anybody, any insurance company punishes you for filing a claim, then you know what? They're just stealing your money because you're taking my premium <clears throat> in return for a service, you know, when I need it. And now that you're going to punish me for that. Yeah. Then it's not the you know consumer's fault. It's that insurance company's fault. So I hope that they see that, too. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that's that's kind of like the, you know, what happens in the background, even though they won't directly say hey you know you filed a claim i'm gonna drop you that's kind of what they insinuate by when you file a claim then you receive a letter with no no reason whatsoever letting you go of that uh, of that policy and that's the fear so, they want to instill in people exactly. so that they stay away from and, filing and, claims i mean i'm sure you guys have heard too but they also do that when you're when the insured calls directly to their agent or anybody to file the claim uh, and the first thing they tell them is, are you sure you have a X amount of deductible? You know, they, they kind of push you yeah. towards, well, do I really want to do this? They don't even explain to you that you don't have to pay the deductible. It comes out of the settlement. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just lack of education all around, you know, from the agents to the carriers to the homeowners to maybe other adjusters. Just. And it's crazy how often we talk about agents here. And I, I just want to make clear that we don't have anything against agents. No. We have no. something against bad agents. And like there are many bad public adjusters out there, there's a lot of bad agents out there. Right. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's where, who my war is against. Uh, but not all agents in general, just no. to, you know, make sure that that's clear for the, for the viewers. <laughs> and again, they may just be uneducated. You know, this insured, actually, he told me he had called his agent first. And his agent told him, I have no idea how this claim thing works. I'm not familiar with the process. I can't believe it. Yeah. And wow. he actually called her when I was there again because they had to send him his policy again. And um, and I told him, I mean, it's not that's not their job. They're, they sell yeah. policies. They don't file claims. So she's right. She's not familiar with the process. So if they tell well, you otherwise. To a certain extent. I mean, you may not know how to adjust the claim, but you should know the process of filing a claim if you're an agent. So he um, says they told her they were not familiar with that process. Well, Which is good for me because then he asked a friend who referred us, you know, so. Here. <laughs> All right. You were hooked. Shout out to, to uh, Andre behind the camera. Shout out to Patrick, my boy P, Freaky. He's going to throw some rhymes later on today. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, we're going on a trip. We're going on we're a going trip. To, uh, I just came back from a trip. But you, you're always traveling, bro. That's, no, that's just this is that's your lifestyle. Business travel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just came back. That's true. From the panhandle, which was very interesting. Tell me about it. Uh, well, I got a lot of questions, which is why I brought up the whole deductible thing. We got a lot of questions up there about people not knowing how the deductible works. Uh, you know, they think they have to pay it. Um, you know, and, and I think one of the days we went to see four different houses and in three of them, they asked us, so who do I pay the deductible to? Yeah. Can I pay that right off the bat? How does that work? You know, they've, they've never filed a claim. Yeah. So um, that's something that we have to clear up a lot. But yeah, there's there's a lot going on up there. Yeah. What do you think? is Because I know that uh, even though we have signed claims up there for the, mm -hmm. the majority of the of the homeowners are reluctant to... Reluctant? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to... <laughs> Were you reluctant to, file? to yeah. using or that to word? Just move forward. <laughs> yeah, the adamant. That's the word, not reluctant. Uh, the, adamant well, to, uh, what, I, what I've seen, which is the same thing we saw in Panama City, is they're, they're very trusting mm -hmm. that the insurance company is going to do the right thing, yeah. um, which I hope they do, but yeah. that's all it is, a hope. Um, we know how they work, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I had the, the same, same response thing. Yeah, from, from that. Uh, demographic there is they trust their insurance company yeah. and they think that you know if i'm paying my insurance to represent me why should i hire an adjuster yeah soon they'll find out why did you guys see a lot of because i haven't been myself uh yet to the pensacola but um was there a lot of destruction as as uh, there was be after michael or no, less? not as bad now it was bad but not as bad kind of like irma down here no a little more a little more than so, Irma? Yeah, oh. it was somewhere think, in between. Yeah, I think not as generalized. I think there were some like really bad hit areas and then some like completely unaffected areas. There's like yeah. pockets of like 
really bad areas uh, like i don't know like it was like a wind gust that went through a certain like maybe a couple blocks destroyed everything and then a couple blocks down everything's fine did you notice that there were older homes that the older the homes the more damage and then the the areas where there wasn't a lot of damage was it because there were newer communities in construction not me yeah not not me either no. so it was I, just I, I saw sporadic. damage to very brand new houses yeah especially okay. on the coast there's yeah. a lot of homes on the coast yeah. and those homes were completely destroyed and and well there's a story with the, of this one guy uh with fabrizio and i knocked on his door and you know he comes out he says you know what's up i'll explain to him what we do and right away he goes no man my house is fine i'm not filing a claim i take three steps back i go you missing a lot of shingles that's fine that's cosmetic i fixed that myself <laughs> i said okay well that's covered by your insurance here's my card okay thank you you know awesome yeah. but there's a lot of people like that oh that's nothing I, I can fix that yeah but you know that's that's what you have insurance yeah no I, i'm sorry there were a lot of older homes though i don't know if you saw too there was a lot of older homes that have they're very deteriorated so not necessarily hurricane damage but a lot of like unkept homes mm -hmm. um like wooden homes and like i don't know you would see either areas with really nice houses and then you'd see areas that are like very like unkept you know homes yeah. in bad conditions do you think that to a certain extent people up there aren't as uh they don't value property or or material things as much as let's say like people here in miami so that's why they they don't really care whether they have you know shingles of different colors or you know whether maybe maybe but i don't i just don't think they look at it that way they look at it as you know i can i can fix those eight shingles that are missing for like 200 bucks yeah but they're missing and for example here if you have a shingle that looks repaired that's going to affect the value of your home correct. so a lot of people are aware of that so they're concerned with uh repairs you know being made in full not just partial repairs and um, those are things that we educate them on if they give us a chance yeah. you know this guy was very reluctant like you said and he was just no you know i'm, I'm not filing a claim i'm good yeah i think everything you know. circles back to education especially up in that area there's the lack of education uh they see it as two three shingles they don't realize they have to replace the whole roof they don't realize that they could have a leak in a couple months yeah. they don't realize any of those things because they're not experts or they haven't gone through this before um and the way they see that their insurance companies to them it's like a government agency they don't see it as a business they don't see it as a company they see it as like like why am i going to bother them why am i going to have them come out here i'll just fix this but they don't realize it's a company it's a business and you're paying a premium every year for that but yeah. they see it as a burden to the insurance company for them to have to bother them to come out for a couple tiles or a couple shingles yeah look if, if you see here pat that thank was you. you right there on that bike <laughs> no, yeah that's i jumped off real quick. um but this is this looks like it's all from michael and look look that's very you know well, remember, severe remember when we went to, through this uh, street here in your truck yeah can, uh, <laughs> uh pat can you look up um sally, sally? Yeah, yeah hurricane sally yeah so sally was not as bad but you know a lot of trees down a lot of trees yeah. hit houses um so yes no in the, in the images you'll see some yeah. stuff um i wonder if, if a lot of commercial damage too yeah yeah i wonder if up there insurance have insurance companies have made it a point to market themselves in that way where they're they they are to be seen as you know as a government agency no yeah. or that <laughs> but as something that that should not be bothered unless something catastrophic catastrophic yeah and that's how um, they see it they see it like if exactly. it's something they're they're but sorry sorry yeah. sir, to make my yeah. point do you think that's something that that they made that insurance companies did on purpose uh when they were marketing the, their services in some way or how, how do you think, think they so. arrive at that nature and how do you think how does it compare to how we think of insurance i think it's a natural nature for anybody to think that a company that you hire or that you pay a service for is going to respond and is going to take care of you again i think it's just the lack of education of them knowing otherwise because yeah, if the, you, if the you the don't lack know of experience i mean right. they, most of the people we spoke to have never filed a claim so you know how can you expect anything different they're yeah. just they're assuming they pay for a service they're going to take care of me so. um i, I want to point to this picture here um <laughs> i i don't know if that's part of hurricane or if they're they're having fun because you know they're 
<laughs> we saw some homes like this. We saw a lot of homes on the coast like this. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's so, so, and the downtown area, I don't know if you guys went there, mm -hmm. but yeah. that, that had like two feet of water uh, in a lot of areas. Yeah. By the time um, we went, the water had already receded, but it was like, yeah, me too. Completely empty. And, but I spoke to, to a few business owners and um, a lot of them did a lot of repairs themselves. Yeah. We went to like a coffee and, shop that had like fans, their floors are all messed up and they have like fans yeah. and everything. And they're just like, the way they see it is if they can afford to do the, to do the repairs, they don't need to bother their insurance company. Yeah. Which is a total misconception. Even if you can yeah. afford it, you shouldn't have to if you have insurance. Exactly. Exactly. Let's make a, pred a prediction. What do you guys think it's going to happen in the next two, three months as far as uh, insurance and coverages and the uh, uh, residents' perception? In the panhandle? To insurance, yeah. Of insurance. I don't know. Do you think it changed after Michael? I think it did. I remember, I can't recall exactly, but I, rem I remember us having an influx of clients at a certain point. Um, and it was, and most were uh, clients that had filed a claim and they weren't getting responses. Well, do, do you remember, without saying his name, but do you remember uh, the client that I had up there that I had to go back for a second inspection yeah. and then back? And I think you went yeah. also. Um, so I spoke to that guy way after it was done. And his biggest thing was that he couldn't believe that he had to hire, you know, go out and hire someone to have to take care of this for him because yeah. his insurance company wouldn't. Yeah. So that was his biggest thing. And he had never done a claim before. So it was a shock to him that he had to hire an extra service for something that he pays for in the first place. And that's exactly my point and, and how I see it. We shouldn't ha exist. Yeah, we'd all, we'd all be working for the insurance company. <laughs> yeah, we, or we should be adjusters for the insurance company if the insurance company did what they're supposed to do at the time of a loss. Um, because ultimately, the client's paying for that service, and once they need you know, that service, they're not getting what, they're, what they deserve. I so, use that line a lot. What? That my job wouldn't exist if insurance companies would do what they were supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. My experience with Hurricane Michael... Uh, most of the claims at the time that I came across were reopens as well. Yeah, it was people who they had the same mentality. They trust their insurance company. Once they didn't hear back, they told them it was under deductible. They didn't pay them enough. Then they realized maybe I should give them a try. And I think the same thing is going to happen. We, with yeah, Sally. which is why I think with Sally we're going to have a lot of work because a lot of the areas I saw are not completely destroyed. Like with Michael, it's you know eight shingles missing, yeah. a, a tree that brushed a house. Those are claims that. People might hear a response like it's below your deductible yeah. or denials, stuff like that. That's where we can come in. So maybe we should market that um, on, on the ads that we're doing. Just, you know, tell people, hey, even if it's one or two, three shingles, you know, this it could be significant. Not just aesthetically. Uh, this could even if you repair that section there, that could result in a leak somewhere else. So in essence, what we're saying is replace your entire roof if it only has, even if it only has one, two, three shingles that are missing. So maybe we should find a way to, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, so educate them in that way. <laughs> you know, yeah, because I know there's going to be a lot of below deductibles. Yeah. I saw a lot of roofs that I've seen down here after Irma that people were told, no, that's not enough damage. Yeah, or so. people who didn't file a claim because they think they didn't have enough damage, but then in a couple of months they'll start seeing a leak or mold or something and then they'll realize they had a problem that which they didn't is discover. where we have to tell them you're still in time to file a claim yeah you know a lot of people don't know that yeah, yeah. i've been uh lately and this has been a, an idea in my head for a while but can you guys imagine a world where there's like a almost perfect synergy between public adjusters and insurance companies no <laughs> no <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and, and I think there are some cases where there are some no, but I, adjusters. I, I mean at a grand scale, you yeah. know, just. Well, I think if that synergy were to exist, then you wouldn't need a public adjuster because if they were that great and that helpful. And That's they, what I'm saying. I mean, it, it exists between public adjusters and independent adjusters, but not the actual carrier. Yeah. Yeah, because you have great adjusters. We have adjusters yeah. that are terrible, you know, insurance adjusters. And then you have adjusters that are great, but it's not up to them. Yeah. I, I'm doing a, a business program now and part of I have to come up with a growth plan based on a new market. Um, and part of that is coming up with a vision, your mission and the vision of the company, 
to be, you know, what you see, how you see the company in five years. And as I was putting together my, my vision, it occurred to me, you know, what if we could make this happen, right? What if we would be the, that one company to change, to become the gold standard of public adjusting to nationwide? stigma. Nationwide, yes. And then let's have, not give away all our secrets here. Yeah, <laughs> no, of course, but it's recorded. There's a date on it. You know, we know who said it first. And plus, even if you know what, I've recently I've come to realize that even if we do share our secrets, even if we do share our tactics or whatever, maybe it's not like there's a potential out there for somebody else to execute it as well as we do. So yeah, it's you know, not what you do, it's how you do it. So. Exactly. So yeah, I was I was thinking about that. I'm like, hmm, imagine that, you know? If we could just be that gold standard where everybody says, I wanna be like Monarch. And I think they already do. Huh? I well, think they're <laughs> of course. And the ones that don't, they probably say it internally. They yeah. don't they don't they don't, uh, <laughs> they don't verbalize it. They don't verbalize it, yeah. So yeah, I, w I was just what do you guys think? So is it possible or well, I think we're headed in the right direction. I mean, we're we're targeting different markets and you know, not just in Florida, you know, yeah. which what we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, Wait, let me say something before, before, because I want to make a point to another point to this is uh, if any uh, high executives up in, you know, whatever insurance company it may be, uh, vice president of claims, any of those ranks, if you guys are watching this and you want to reach out and explore some of the concepts that I have in mind where we could, you know, collaborate rather than fight each other. Uh, please do so. Uh, I have not only ideas, but I also have data to support, uh, you know, why, why, why what I'm thinking would work. So you know who to call now. <laughs> yeah. And we're right. involved with some organizations, you know, we're working our way up to getting into oh, involved please, in legislation. And Sorry. And one no. more time, because Andre, tell me you got that on camera, bro. You did, right? What? It's not what I was saying, because he said I'm moving far away. Oh, you okay. did. Because if you don't, I'm going to be pissed that you... <laughs> you can just repeat it now. Okay, okay. All right, so yeah, you said about... Sorry to interrupt you, but go ahead about the legislation. Oh, yeah, not, not just certain markets because the consumers themselves, the homeowners, unfortunately, they don't have much voice or power. Um, they should because they technically own these companies, right? Um, yeah. But getting to the right people, the right executives, the right legislators, the right groups, the right organizations to bring our ideas up to legislation and, yeah you know so yeah yeah i, I think i well, mean those are I, things we've we fight through with um with organizations like fapia and stuff like that right correct correct which we have a meeting with them next week oh uh, nice I, I reached out to them and i think we're gonna collaborate uh in some good way i hope so um i mean i'm only offering them our marketing <laughs> team you know at no expense so nice. That's no good. cost to them. You so. spoke to Nancy? Yeah, Nancy, and then we have a... Uh, you can bleep those names up. <laughs> yeah, we have... No, who cares? Everybody knows Nancy. Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, no. yeah Nancy's like the person <laughs> I talk to over there. And um, But uh, she's going to be part of the meeting. Javi's going to be part of the meeting, and also the president uh, of, of FAPIA will be present. In the so. podcast? No, no, no. Uh, in the meeting to Close see doors. how we collaborate uh, moving okay. forward. I also have ideas about that, so... I have a lot of ideas. That's good. So. <laughs> That's good. What about wind? Wind conference? Is that still happening next year? At, With well, COVID? the last thing I saw was that it was going to be virtual. Really? Yeah. yeah. No. So that's why I kind of just, eh, maybe the, the next one. One reason why I attend these events, because I don't, I don't know about you guys, I don't feel like I learn anything. And I, sorry, <laughs> wind or, and Fabia, I just, that's just, you know, and not that I know it all. It's just, it's not information yeah. that I can use, right? But it does offer um it does offer a continuing education credits no and continuing <laughs> education credits uh, a networking benefit, the benefit. networking yeah, yeah. yeah. The that's, networking. that's the biggest key in all it. Yeah. you know it's yeah. networking you meet people Correct. in your field and on the other side as well yeah you, you get to rub shoulders with you know elbows uh, so, <laughs> yeah shoulders <laughs> might be alone <laughs> <laughs> well nowadays it's fists that's so right. That's right. It's just fist people. You bump fists well, with people in your field. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, go ahead. You were going to say something? Oh, no. I was thinking about something. Yeah. Were you thinking the same thing that I was thinking? About what? How do, I know what I was thinking. How does it feel to be me? Remember when we were having no. the conversation? <laughs> yeah, that I but said, I wasn't thinking about like, that. How does it feel to I mean, be me? Now that you mentioned it, I'll probably think about it, but I wasn't thinking about it before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Sorry. Just, let's take a let's take a sharp left here because I, I want to do some some like some weird stuff. Um, okay. So yeah, the, what I, we were talking about earlier, Yuli was telling me a story, and I'm I'm watching her. I'm like, I wonder what it feels like to be her. Does anybody do that? Like think, but just like like in just, that moment, like or you, just or her be inside life. somebody's brain. No, not your life, life, but just how does it feel? Like how do you feel as a person sitting right there? Right? Isn't that weird? <laughs> Nobody I don't, does I don't that, think right? I've ever thought about Isn't that. Isn't it weird that you can never actually see your own face? You, what do you mean? Of course you no, can. No, in a mirror, but that's a reflection. You don't actually get to... Like, I can see your face. You will never see your own face. But you're technically... See, I'm very practical, and you're seeing the reflection of your face, which is your face. No, but not you're not actual. You know what I mean? Not yeah. physically. Like, like you, you can look at your hands, you know, but you right, can you never can look at your, your body, face. But you can never look at your face. Gotcha. Only a reflection of it. Oh. Huh. That's a good point. But and just to wrap up this uh, tangent, um, <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest and you're not there to witness it, did it make a sound? Yes. How do you know? Because it's physics and it fell and it's going to hit the ground. It's going to make a sound if I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> that's a complex one. Well, well, I was going to talk about go ahead. new markets. New markets, yes. Oh yeah, I love new markets. I already so, have a new market. Uh, who's licensed right now? Who is licensed? Uh, well, in we're all states. licensed yeah. in Florida. In other states, <laughs> you, me, Laz, Yuli is get, you're getting licensed. I soon, applied right? for the North Carolina, North Carolina license. I think Laz has North and South Carolina. You have Louisiana and Texas. Yeah. You have. I have Texas, Louisiana, still pending. Uh, and I just applied yesterday for North Carolina. Okay. So. I don't think no. Texas wants me over there because I applied way <laughs> before you and I have yet to get my license. Did you do everything right? Well, except the fingerprints, which I also submitted before you and I still don't have my license. I don't know. It could be my criminal record. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they just don't <laughs> like you. <laughs> they know what's coming. That's why. <laughs> but that's already what? So North Carolina, South Carolina. Texas. Uh, Tennessee. Texas. I mean, not Tennessee. Texas. Texas Louisiana. Louisiana. Uh, so, and I think Florida. somebody had mentioned something about Tennessee, about getting licensed Becky. in Tennessee. Becky. But, oh, but it's yeah. it's not at least in the in the website that we use to get the license. It's, it's not, not available. Is anybody doing Georgia? Te- it says temporarily unavailable. Oh, oh, you're right. I did see that temporarily unavailable. Maybe they're not part of the Georgia. Website. Is available. Yeah. Is there a reason why everybody's skipping Georgia, even though we have to drive through it to go to? I don't know. Places? And Alabama too. Alabama does not allow public adjustment. Yeah, it does not. Really? Mm-hmm. Which is unfair that somebody cannot hire representation. They're not allowed to have a public wow. adjustment. Wow. We can change that. We can. Definitely. Or or we could just become independent in their state, and then represent the actually represent the insured's interest rather than the company's. You know, okay. kind of like a Robin Hood type thing, which we already do, yeah. by the way. But yeah. with a robbing, no robbing part. Just, <laughs> just, everything's you know. But where I was going with that is. What's next? What's next? Well, I mean, first, let's get the job, the work <laughs> in these states. We will. Um, and, then, and then what's next is, you know, like I said, uh, like the, uh, and the vision, um, golden, gold standard of public adjusting nationwide. So, and I'm assuming for right now, the plan is to have everyone licensed in these new states, right? No, look, and that's something that we were discussing. I'm not going to force anybody to no, not do forced, something against their will. It would be the plan. Yeah, I I think that for this to work, since we're from Miami and we are so you know close to our families, we you know our culture is a little weird in that sense. Um, the plan is to go into those states, you know, generate the work, and then hire people from the states and help them make, get licensed. Uh, this is not something that's going to happen overnight, obviously, right? So it's going to take some time. But I already have some ways that, that we can, you know, like, for example, we can market to independent adjusters in those states and offer them a better opportunity on the public adjusting side. Um, right. That's people. Those are people that won't require so much training, you know? Yeah. Um, and then that's easy to do nowadays with, you know, LinkedIn. Um, there's also a way to see who's getting licensed, uh, you know, freshly licensed. I just haven't figured that one out yet. Uh, do you guys know? No. Well, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's several ways that, that we could do that. And 
you know, I do a lot of thinking, but I don't know. I don't do all the thinking. So if you guys have any suggestions, don't say them here. Let's discuss them <laughs> later, but let's discuss them. All right. Yeah. And okay. the more people that get licensed, you know, cross licensed different states, the better. Look, now in Pensacola, we had a total of what was like almost 20 adjusters. How many adjusters? Or 12? No, uh, 15. 15 rotating, you know. So if the more adjusters we have cross licensed in different states, then until yeah. we get that up and running, everybody can support everybody yeah it doesn't else. have to be the same people going right. all exactly. the time like and we're we're going this weekend to louisiana to yeah. louisiana yeah maybe um, texas also exactly we'll and with with the if edgar gets licensed <laughs> <laughs> if they let him in they may <laughs> not let him in <laughs> right there well, right now <laughs> on the board you're licensed in louisiana <laughs> i'm licensed in texas so yeah we can we'll figure Take something turns. out I think with the the technology that we have nowadays, it really doesn't even require us to be a hundred percent present, uh, or at least you know um, permanently present to be to form another uh, monarch office in, in these states. It's actually a lot easier. Uh, we will be present though, you know. We, yeah. we do want to have that connection with the clients and make sure. And I'm glad you bring that up because. It's important to to mention the benefit of working with somebody like Monarch, right? That comes from this market. This is one of the toughest insurance markets, uh, and I would say I would dare say in the entire country, right? So when you're when we go to another state, we bring all this experience, all these issues that we deal with, uh, experience with issues that we deal with here to those states. And we use those against insurance companies to, you know, help their clients recover and require, require, um, sorry, and recover a lot quicker. Yeah. So I think that's an that's an advantage that we need to, you know, um, promote when 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 we're trying to market these uh, or market to these new clients in other states, which are going to going to be adamant to about you know signing with somebody that's not local. So yeah, no, we think? definitely have to use that, and and like you said, this is you know. I think the volume of claims and w- where we are located does not compare yeah. to anything else. Not only volume, the complexity yeah. of the claims that we handle here, and the hoops that they that the insurance company you know fights back with. When we go to any other state and we apply what we know, these people are just gonna, you know, in essence, crack and and pay us what what we want. Yeah. Remember wow. a couple of weeks ago, I had that adjuster tell me, you Miami adjusters? He's yeah. in Pennsylvania. I've heard that before. He's in Pennsylvania. He's like, you Miami adjusters. He ended up apologizing, by the way, because I sent him an email and then he ended up apologizing. He's like, oh, not all adjusters are bad. I'm with a happy face. Yeah. Um, but we have that reputation. It's just that, I mean, it's not our fault that this market is, is that busy. The weather conditions too, you know, hurricanes, yeah. well, I mean, storms. It, maybe he meant it in a, in a positive. He did not. <laughs> <laughs> he did not mean it in a positive way. But it's you know, not because uncommon. We, we push so we get what what we they don't like that you know um it's not uncommon for even uh, insurance company adjusters to travel to different states Uh, a lot of these insurance companies are nationwide and whenever there's a catastrophe a wildfire in california a hurricane in the east coast they send all their adjusters you know to that region yeah so it's not uncommon for adjusters to to travel um or to go to different areas that they're not you know originally or familiar with that's true you know I was thinking as I was talking, I was thinking about something else. Were you thinking about, about the, the thing? What it feels like, like to be? No, not yet. I haven't gone <laughs> yet. But it just going back to what you were saying about that synergy of the insurance company, you know, working with adjusters, you know. So Monarch and other adjusters have been able to do that. Like, I think in South Florida specifically. Yeah. I think with Monarch branching out to these other states. I mean, I literally picture a map and just like lighting up where Monarch is going. I think and gold. And yeah, gold. like gold. I think like the further the fire spreads, then the more they'll realize that there needs to be a synergy. Yeah. Like right now, we're just this little space in Florida. Like, oh, these people, whatever, you know, these Miami adjusters. Yeah. But once they realize these Miami adjusters are, we're not, well, we're not just Miami adjusters. We're all in the state of Florida. But now, okay, these people are, are educating people in the Carolinas yeah. in Georgia, you know, the whole Southeast and they're spreading. They're like, okay, maybe that'll be like the breaking point where they'll realize that there has to be some, I think it's going to take more than that. I think, I so. think, and it has to be from within. It has to within be within them or within us, within that, like us penetrating through, you know, their, their, uh, shields and kind of like getting the information that we have and jamming it 
and then the light bulb turns on and and this is it's gonna take some time yeah but yeah the, I and mean, the idea like that, i said we're going the right way i think the the way i have it planned um it's gonna be one insurance company at a time and starting with small ones and then you know going to big, bigger bigger ones um and but we've I, made we've made dents here and there yeah, with insurance no. companies you know they've, they 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 know they see they see that w we mean business exactly so. what about if we promote like the opposite like instead of filing claims like help people avoid claims why are you so smart i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well two questions why are you so smart and why haven't you said that before no because i just thought about it i'm just like what about like you know what i mean you're still calling attention to yourselves because if something happens, because something can't happen, you still call us. But instead of them seeing us as that enemy that we're like trying to make people fall claims, we're actually trying to help people not fall. Yeah, yeah. Like trying to prevent claims will help you prevent claims. Will help like educate people. I don't know. You know what I mean? I think that in turn that would actually call more attention and bring more business because people are like, okay, they're not. You know so what I mean? this I is know. how you can prevent a bathroom leak. Yeah, but. If it leaks, guys. <laughs> so this this is a great idea, and I'm I, I think I'm not ready to share it yet. But the there's a bigger thing that I'm actively working on that involves that already. Okay. Um, I didn't I didn't think yeah, of anything it, new. <laughs> it didn't involve promoting that specifically, but it involves preventing, uh, doing preventative work, like educating. Like our so, goal could be like educating yeah. homeowners. So that was your idea, a hundred percent. Okay. So Just, okay educating people but then also be the, that adjust no, okay. let's talk Never about mind. the let's Bye. talk about because you're, you're gonna get close and then you know <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be close it. <laughs> it's gonna i'm sorry i just okay. yeah yeah the creativeness well so. I, that's anyway that's where i wanted to go with that just you know expansion growth different yeah. states uh so clearly that's what's next and within yeah. too um, within the company we have yeah you know we promote it here too a lot of people a lot of new people are getting insured we have a, um insured licensed we have a lot of new apprentices, so the team is growing from within as well. Yeah. Which, by the way, I had somebody reach out to me via LinkedIn, and since you're the greatest uh, recruiter ever, I'd like you to place a call to her and um, speak to her. For PA? Yeah, she she's already a 620. She already took the state exam, uh, but you know, just figure her out, see, so make sure she's a good fit uh, for us, and that she figures out whether we're a good fit for her. So that's good. So yeah, guys. She has experience, huh? Uh, she says yeah. She has a year of experience, but uh, I, I don't want to get into the details. Okay. Um, so yeah, man. What else you have on that list that we that we got to touch on? <laughs> uh, we only have like another ten minutes. So, uh, like I said, we're we're going to Louisiana mm -hmm. on Saturday. Um, we're gonna be there for a few days. Oh my God! Yes, we're gonna be vlogging. Guys, catch us. Yeah. Cash twenty four seven outside. Cash us outside. With the vlog with the vlog from the plane from the plane. No. From the Uber to the plane. By the way, Pat, sorry, bro. We're not flying first class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not. Yeah, we were, but next I, I, next time, next time. Yeah, I didn't book it like right when when I saw it. It was three hundred bucks for first class round trip. And then I booked it the next day. Now it's like a thousand dollars per person. Nah, yeah, never it ain't gonna happen. Technical he difficulties. Like, he like, You're interested in coming? I was like, Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, and, he was like, and I was like, I just gotta make sure. He's like, Well, if you like flying first class, you should come. <laughs> like, oh yeah, for sure. So you still want to come, Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of vlogging, just document that whole that whole trip. Which makes me wonder, since I'm the only one licensed in Louisiana, that that means that I'm gonna be the one having to speak to clients, and like you know, do I think the, the whole thing. As you were talking, I think you my email license? came in. Yeah, because all I was missing was the bond, and I submitted it, and they're pretty quick to respond. So, and not that I have a problem By with Saturday, that. By Saturday, I should be good to go. <laughs> not that I have a problem with that. It's just you know, it, you don't want to steal the show. Yeah, you I, you I see, that's why I, I need you here. Always <laughs> fi like finishing my sentences in the <laughs> perfect way. Wow, exactly. Um, so yeah, not that I, as I was. <laughs> Uh, not that I don't like it. It's just I haven't done it in a while, so it'll be interesting to see. You know, get get my hands my hands wet again, or my feet wet. Hands dirty. Hands my dirty. My, sho my, shoulder, my shoulders. <laughs> my shoulders, shoulders dirty. 
Um, no, so I, didn't have, I didn't have any more questions. I just I wanted to really talk about that different states licensing and stuff like that, and we got into it. So yeah, yeah. Well, you guys know. Uh, well, I'm gonna go off again. But do you, before that, do you guys want to discuss anything more? In, anything else? Insurance? Uh, is there any other point that that you wanted to touch on on this quick long podcast? No. I, th I think we touched on everything we wanted to talk about, which was mainly the panhandle stuff, which is what's hot right now. So, Gotcha. Um, Pat, go ahead and pull up here. Um, existentiality. You guys are going um, Louisiana. Is it Delta? Is that, is that the Delta. storm? I don't, Delta. 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 Oh, the storm? storm? Yeah. There's I thought you were talking about the airline. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, the hurricane. Yeah. A philosoph philosophical theory or approach which emphasizes the existence of the individual individual person as a free and responsible agent determining their own development through acts of the will. Okay. Do you guys consider yourselves existentials? Yes. I mean, unless you're like being held captive or something and you're not. Is there like an easier will. definition? Because I'm having a really hard time. It's just existing uh, pretty much and being yeah. responsible for your own actions. So in essence, you are, you exist. So therefore, you are responsible for everything that you affect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, so are we. So <laughs> See, if you're, there you go. We are our choices. That's yeah, good. we are our choices. So okay, I like that. So there's there's no like you know hidden power or anything that that's. You know, I mean, that is a very long conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's another podcast <laughs> for a different. And uh, and I have a, a recorded statement to go to. <laughs> so, oh man, I really wanted to you know <laughs> dig a little deep in that, but okay, I understand. I understand. All right, guys, thank you for taking time away from your beautiful days to uh, be here with me for a little bit, and uh, I hope that all the viewers have found this uh, helpful, especially if you're watching us from Pensacola and from any other state. You already know what the plans are, so we're coming to a city near you. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and to place comments. We want to hear what you guys have to say and what you guys think of the information that we're providing. All right, until next time.